What is going on everybody? This is Bronco Jolo and today I am doing a Wild Eye review. I gotta thank Wild Eye for sending me this movie and just thank you guys for being the awesome company that you are. I love you guys. You're so good to me and I hope I return the favor. Today I am doing the 2017 film got its Wild Eye release in 2020. Yes, Wild Eye re-releases films that are already out. They give small filmmakers bigger releases. That's what they do. They don't change the names because they're trying to hide something. They don't change the film because they're trying to fake it. They try to help filmmakers that don't get the breaks that others do. If you don't like their fucking way they do business, then go fuck yourself. And if anybody says that I'm chasing cloud, go look in the mirror, you poofy haired son of a bitch. So yeah, anyways, Amityville Clown House. I believe it was, it's actually a sequel to Amityville Toy Box, which came out in 2016, but hasn't got its Wild Eye release yet. It's getting get its Wild Eye release a little later this year. Directed by Dustin Ferguson and starring Ben Gother as Ben, it stars Mark Patton as James. And what I've heard may be Mark Patton's last movie role, but only time will tell that. And it also stars Michelle Mir Lewis as Michelle. Yeah, um, they didn't have to go far for their names in this one. Probably a good idea because the actors in this are not the greatest. Uh, guys, this movie kind of follows in the trend of the cursed objects from the actual MDL franchise. And I read some people's online reviews of this where they think that this movie is actually part of that franchise. It's not. It's another movie that's been taken from the, you know, just, it, it, it's just another filmmaker that puts Amityville in his title. In this movie, a painting that is in a house in Nebraska that was in the original Amityville house causes a man to go nuts and kill his family. And then I guess a little toy that was in that house is given to another house via a comic book shop or collector shop is what it looked like. And then weird shit starts happening in that house. You know, cursed object, get it? Personally, I don't think they should call this Amityville Clown House because the clown only shows up a couple times and it's mostly towards the beginning of the film. With all of that being said, I always give honest reviews, 100% honest. And this movie's garbage, guys. It is such crap. Oh man, I'm sorry, but this movie sucked. Uh, I definitely still want to see the, original, the, the first one to it. I still want to see Toy Box. This movie was bad. And it wouldn't be so bad because it does have an interesting story. Sorry, the air conditioner just kicked on in the hotel room. It wouldn't be so bad if I could hear the motherfucking thing. It has a decent story. I really like the gore in the film. And the first five minutes or five to ten minutes are badass. This movie started out on such a rise, which I think is what makes me even more disappointed in it. Is it started off so good and then it just went to shit afterwards. Every time we're in the main character's house and they're talking, you can't hear a damn thing. But you can hear the TV segment that's done. You can hear the James character in his comic book store. But you can't hear a damn thing that the main characters are saying in the house. Like literally, I had the TV turned up past 100. You can't hear anything. It was all the way to the tip top volume. You can't hear a damn thing. Even with the sound bar, I couldn't hear nothing. So yeah, sorry, that's a big con. And that is 100%, in my opinion, on the filmmakers. They, 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 you could tell that this wasn't a transfer error. This is a problem within that film. Because uh, not the whole film is like that, it's just only the parts where it's mic'd inside that house. There's a very long scene, a long sequence of very cliche horror movie-esque found footage that just did not need to be in the movie and it doesn't help, it doesn't do anything. There's also a lot of just regular like stock footage of like, you know, a pond or some ducks or whatever, you know? And it's like, why is this, why are they concentrating so much on this? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, at the very beginning of the film, the daughter looks older than the mother. The actress who plays the daughter looks like she's 10 years older than the actress who plays the mother. Uh, those kind of small things were just that there. The acting is pretty crap. Mark Patton does a good job, but he's not really doing anything. He's leaning behind the counter and playing himself, basically. 
you know, just as the proprietor of a of a comic slash collectible shop. There is a really awesome shotgun kill that I really like. But aside from that, guys, this movie has nothing going for it. I was just sitting there waiting for it to be over, honestly. Uh, I always give good reviews, so I know that Wild Eye is not going to really put this review out there because, you know, of course, you want to you want to put up shit that is good on your products, and you know, I don't blame Wild Eye for these kind of movies. When I get a bad movie, it's not Wild Eye's fault. They're giving people chances. They're giving filmmakers shots. It's on these filmmakers to deliver a good product. It's not on their distribution company. Wild Eye is a distribution company. Yes, they have a production company too. They do some production. They didn't produce on this movie. But they are a distribution company. No different than, say, Warner Brothers or Universal or anybody else that distributes movies. Buena Vista Distribution. There's plenty of shit movies that have come out on those too. You know? It's just the way it is, guys. That's it for this review. Love you, Wild Eye. Can't wait to watch another movie when I get home. I'm stuck a long ways away from home right now. But when I get home, I'm going to do some more reviews. And I can't wait to get into them. Because i got a lot of good Wild Eye films, guys. A lot, a lot, a lot coming up. And I've got a lot of other stuff going on this month of October. Because there's just a lot that goes on during this month for horror fans. So... Until next time, everybody, this is Bronco Joe saying peace, love, and chicken grease.